Would you like to learn what medications doctors are prescribing for insomnia? If so, stay tuned. Hello, my name is Douglas Block. I'm an author and mental health educator. Welcome to your Depression Recovery channel, where each week we talk about practical skills and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. The title of today's video is Medications That Are Prescribed for Insomnia. Uh, but before we start, of course, we have to do our regular ritual, which is to tell a joke to release all the endorphins in the brain, because laughter, after all, is good medicine. So uh, <clears throat> I, I know a lot of couples around Portland. The other uh, day, uh, I actually go to 24-Hour Fitness, and one day I didn't see them, and I said to the man, what's going on? He said, we quit our membership. I said, why you quit your membership uh, to the gym? He said, well, our, our relationship wasn't working out. <laughs> All right, so um, medications that are prescribed for insomnia. Well, this follows right on the heels of a video I did, uh, an amazing video, not because of me, but because of the information I uncovered on the most important thing you can do for your health, which was to get good sleep. It turns out that uh, sleep is so critical for all of our aspects of mental and physical well-being. And to get good sleep, um, I mentioned and others have mentioned, we need to practice what's called good sleep hygiene. Going to bed at a regular time, getting up at a regular time, keeping your room cool and dark, uh, practicing relaxation before bed, not watching uh, YouTube right before you go to sleep. Right? If you wake up in the middle of the night, don't lie in bed all the time. Get up and you know, do something productive around the house, etc. But despite all of this, people like myself who suffer from depression and anxiety, as you know, in both of those conditions, one of the primary symptoms is sleep disruption. So for many of us, good sleep can be hard to come by. So despite the best efforts of many of us, um, we still have, many of us with anxiety and depression, have trouble either falling asleep or staying asleep. My, my, I fall in the latter category, although I have this gal in my support group says she just lies awake for hours before she can fall asleep. Well, in these cases, there are medications out there, some of them are very old, that have been used to treat insomnia. Now, before I continue, I want to say I'm not a doctor, I'm not a prescriber, and even if I were, I would not try to prescribe anything over the internet. If you feel that medications might be a good option for you, you need to go talk to your doctor, your psychiatrist, your nurse practitioner, let them know, and you guys can decide. All I'm doing is presenting information that you can look up on the internet, it's, it's freely available, and uh, my own personal experience. So just want to get that clear before we continue. The first class of medications that are often prescribed are called the benzodiazepines. Now, many of you who have anxiety know about those medications, uh, but they're also used for sleep. Um, Clonopin, Ativan, Xanax, and Valium, which goes back a long way. I remember, God, I just had a, you know, a flashback. My mother used to take 10 milligrams of, of Valium in the 50s and 60s and 70s before she went to sleep because uh, she had a sleep disorder. Now, although these things do work, they've got two problems. One is uh, you can become dependent upon them, and then when you try to get off, they create withdrawal symptoms. You know, I learned this in my drug and alcohol training that there are only two medications that if you try to withdraw from, they can create seizures. One is alcohol, and the other is the benzos, like uh, clonopin. So, if you're on a benzo and you want to taper, boy, you have to do it under supervision. I remember one of my first uh, group members went into a local treatment center for six months, and that's how long it took her to taper from, from her clonopin. And they also create tolerance, which means sometimes you need more and more, you know, to get the same effects. So you might start off with a half a milligram of clonopin. A year later, you might be up to three milligrams. So this is why doctors say, correctly so, that these should only be used short term. The next class of uh, medications used to treat insomnia, prescribed by doctors, are called the antidepressants. Now, of course, I don't need to tell you what those are, right? Those of us who are depressed have probably tried some of them. But there are three that seem to be used for sleep. Uh, one is called trazodone, uh, also known as Desiril, that's its trade name, uh, Remeron, and Amitriptyline. Now, uh, these medications, of course, were not originally prescribed for sleep. They're antidepressants, but they always had these side effects of excessive drowsiness, which was considered a nuisance until one psychiatrist got the bright idea and said, wow, if these drugs make, make people drowsy, maybe they could use, 
be used before sleep. And maybe they would help people fall asleep. And in fact, it worked. Now, typically, these medications are used in much lower doses than they would be used if they were prescribed for depression. For example, uh, when I was on amitriptyline many, many years ago during my major depressive episode, I think I was taking 250 milligrams a day. Uh, the, the range is between 150 and, and 300. However, if a psychiatrist were to prescribe that for someone with simple insomnia, they would serve 25, a much lower dose. And as a matter of fact, as I got better, I cut my dose down more and more and more. And now I'm only taking 10 milligrams a night for sleep. You know, some people would consider that a microdose, but I notice uh, the difference when I don't take it. The other thing about good thing about these antidepressants is they're not habit, habit forming, and you don't uh, develop dependence. So, for example, uh, I've been taking I think 10 milligrams of amitriptyline for 15 years, and uh, one time I went on a trip, I forgot to take them, and I had to go five or six days, no problem, no withdrawal symptoms. When I came back, I simply started them up again. So that's a really good thing, and um, one of the reasons why I think uh, that these medications uh, should be considered between you and your doctor. Now there's a fourth antidepressant that has been used for insomnia, which quite frankly I hadn't heard of until yesterday when I saw my nurse practitioner. Now, how synchronistic is that? It's called doxepin, D-O-X-E-P-I-N. And like amitriptyline, it's a tricyclic antidepressant, which means it's uh, been around for quite some time. But the FDA has actually approved this for the treatment of sleep problems. Actually, you, you look it up and that's what it's used for. So it must be very, very successful in, in how it works. <clears throat> it's long acting, which means if you take it, they expect you to sleep seven to eight hours, which is great. However, don't take it unless you're supposed to, you're going to sleep seven, eight hours, says the packaging. Because let's say you took it at you know, 2 a.m. and then you got up at 7 a.m. to go to work. Uh -uh, because then if you tried to drive that morning, you'd be way too drowsy and you would risk accidents. In general, they say don't drive after taking any of these drowsy uh, creating drugs, which is common sense. Finally, there's a class of drugs, medications called sedatives or hypnotics. Uh, these depress the nervous system, central nervous system, and uh, they go by names like Ambien, Lunesta, and Sonata. By the way, have you noticed that there are no Z's in those names, like Zoloft and Prozac and Effexor, right? I don't know, Lunesta, Sonata, they sound very restful, don't they? I'm sure the people who marketed those names were thinking of that. <clears throat> anyway, these are used for sleep. Um, like the benzos, they can become habit-forming, only short-term use, say the doctors. And uh, for people like me, okay, so when you think of insomnia, what do you think of people who can't go to sleep? Well, for people like myself and many other people, we can get to sleep just fine. It's that we wake up at two in the morning and can't get back to sleep. And so there's a medication called Ambien uh, CR, which is what, I think it must mean ambient controlled release, which lasts seven, eight hours, which I take, which does allow you to sleep through the night. Now, I got my prescription refilled yesterday by my nurse practitioner, as I said, and he said, Doug, the FDA warns against driving anything or driving a car within 12 hours after you take this medication. So do not drive 12 hours when you take it. Well, uh, after you take it. So I usually go to about 11 p.m., 11 a.m., hmm, nope, I don't leave my house until noon. I'm safe. But again, a warning that on these long-acting uh, sleep aids, you should make sure that in the morning, if you're still drowsy, not to uh, drive or, they say, operate any, any dangerous machinery. A final note, uh, you've probably heard that uh, with the medication Ambien, uh, people can have what are called blackouts, where uh, they wake up in the middle of the night, they sleepwalk, they may go downstairs and cook a meal or vacuum the floor, or maybe even take the car out for a leisurely drive, and they have no recollection that they did this. Well, the, obviously this can be dangerous, so my psychiatrist said to me uh, when he first prescribed the drug, here's a way, Doug, you can you know, cut down the odds of that happening. Get ready for bed, do your routines, turn out the lights, go into the covers, and then reach for the the half of an ambient, and put it under your tongue and let it dissolve while you're lying there with your eyes closed, and that should prevent any uh, sleepwalking. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these hypnotic sedatives like Ambien, Lunesta, Sonata, uh, the manufacturers say only for short-term use. 
Although I've known two people who've been on Ambien for years. I don't know how they do it. And myself, I've been taking it for a year, Ambien, but only intermittently. I take it about maybe once a week uh, max. Uh, whenever I, I feel anxious or really wound up that night and I can't get to sleep, I say, okay, I give up and I reach for my half a pill. But fortunately, I'm able to you know, cut that to once a week or four times a month, and that doesn't seem to create any problems. Finally, uh, <clears throat> the last category of sleep aids I want to talk about are the over-the-counter sleep aids, uh, such as Benadryl. Uh, most of these are antihistamines, uh, which cause drowsiness uh, and maybe make you really tired the next morning. The FDA has approved these uh, to be over-the-counter, so they obviously deem them safe enough to be used in that way. And I did try Benadryl many years ago uh, when I first had sleep problems, and my doctor did warn me uh, not to combine it with other cold or allergy medications because they also take uh, or consist of um, antihistamines and taking two at the same time uh, could be too much. So in conclusion, for those of us <clears throat> who have problems uh, with sleep, I think what's it, 100 million Americans have sleep disorders. I guess that's a lot, right? Uh, there are sleep medications that can be useful in helping us either fall asleep or stay asleep. If you think you'd like to try that route, Remember to go with a trained doctor, hope, hopefully a psychiatrist or a mental health uh, psychiatric nurse practitioner uh, in order to determine which medication you should take, if any, its dosage, and how long you should take it. This has been Douglas Block. Thank you again for watching one of our educational videos. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like. You can also leave your comments in the comments section or email me, douglasblock at gmail.com. If you want to subscribe to this channel, uh, please click on my photo in the closing credits. You'll be taken to the subscribe page, and there's also a little bell to the upper right of the subscribe button. If you click that, you'll be notified every time I do a new video or post a new live chat. And if you want to support this channel, click on the Patreon link where you can go to my crowdfunding site. And until we meet again, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you so much for watching.